You're listening to the Life with Old Dogs podcast, and I'm your host, Dawn Mimna, primary caretaker of all of our wonderful senior German Shepherds right here at Woody's Place Senior German Shepherd Sanctuary. In this week's episode of the Life with Old Dogs podcast and coinciding blog post, we're covering hypothyroidism in senior German shepherds. So this is going to wrap it up for season three, the 20 most common health issues in senior German shepherds. And then I'm going to be taking a much needed break, probably four to six weeks before season four uh comes live to you, and that's going to be all things degenerative myelopathy in senior German shepherds. Uh, so I, I won't technically be off for four to six weeks because we'll be putting that season together. But for you all, won't be back for four to six weeks. But anyway, without further ado, let's get to it. Uh, hypothyroidism in senior German shepherds. So Uh, Let's say you have an older German Shepherd and he seems a little off lately. You're not quite sure what's going on. Perhaps he doesn't seem as active as he once was. Maybe he's putting on a little weight. Um, Perhaps he's losing some hair, maybe on his trunk, by his tail, his legs. Maybe there's black patches of skin. You don't quite understand what's going on. You're thinking maybe it's allergies, you know, different things, but you don't know what it is. So you decide to take him to the vet to get him checked out. Um, and while you're there, your veterinarian checks him over. She, you know, she does a physical examination. She may, she may be feeling around his thyroid, which um, happens to be it's a butterfly-shaped gland right around the trachea of uh, your dog's neck. And it's got um, like two lobes, one on each side of the trachea. So maybe she's feeling there to see if if she feels like a mass or anything like that. And um, then she's also going to run, um, she's also going to run blood work to see what his levels look like. Uh, And she may also be testing for any thyroid issues. So specifically, she's going to be, she should be testing for um, a free T4 and a total T4 or a thyroxine, and a T3 testing. Um, So these levels will indicate if something's amiss, perhaps, you know, your senior German Shepherd's thyroid's not kicking out as much um, hormone as it once was, because um, as our our senior German Shepherds get older, um, the thyroid gland actually may start to shrink. Or become damaged for some unknown reason, or perhaps an autoimmune disease that you're you're not aware of, or like Hashimoto syndrome or something like that. Um, so when this happens, when the thyroid starts to shrink or become damaged, it begins to underproduce the thyroid hormone, um, which causes the metabolism to slow down. Um, and and so if it's left untreated, it can it can lead to things like weight gain and a lethargy and a, and a host of other problems, which I'll, I'll get in he- into here shortly. Um, but it's important to get it diagnosed because really, you know, the, the thyroid controls so many aspects of our life, including our senior German shepherds from how we're feeling physically to how we're feeling mentally and emotionally. So it's it's important to um, to get it to get it checked out and get on top of it and get treatment for your senior German shepherd should he end up with an underactive thyroid. All right, so I, I just talked about what causes um, hypothyroidism in our senior German shepherds. It could be damaged, it could be shrinkage. It could also be inflammation. Inflammation can um, result in thyroid gland issues as well. Um, but the end result is still the same. It's a reduction in that um, thyroid thyroid hormone um, production. 
So I, I mentioned some of the signs of hypothyroidism um, in our in our fur friends, but I'm going to read off. I'm going to rattle off a list here of other symptoms to be aware of. Uh, again, weight gain, uh, change in appetite, a decreased um, decreased appetite. You might see uh, them having difficulty swallowing. Again, uh, they may be tired and just seem run down and not want to not want to do too much. So lethargy. Um, mental dullness, you know, perhaps they're they're just not as mentally active as they were, and that could be misconstrued for other common health issues in senior German shepherds. But it certainly is a common health issue in um, a common symptom in hypothyroidism as well. Um, so this is a big one, and we've had a few senior German shepherds here at the sanctuary who've had uh, thyroid disease. Hashimoto syndrome. In fact, savvy, savvy's on thyroid medication, but thinning coat. So you, you'll you'll see thinning coat, uh, bald patches, um, particularly around the the trunk of their belt, their trunk of their body, their tail, their their the back of their legs, their belly, um, and then the skin darkens and even turns black. So that that's pretty noticeable. So if you're not picking up on the things like maybe they're not as active as they once were or mentally sharp, you might think that that's something else. You're certainly not going to miss the the bald patches and the thinning coat and the um, the blackened skin. Uh, flaky skin, that's another thing that they may have. Um, thickening skin kind of reminds me of like elephant skin. So again, thyroid issues really do affect the skin and it it is rather noticeable. Uh, cold intolerance, you know, perhaps because their hair is thinning and falling out. And of course, that keeps them warm. So if if they don't have that, you know, they're going to be cold and you may notice it. Um, German Shepherds, it's a little harder to notice the cold intolerance. But with a dog such as a pit bull or something like that, where they're, you know, they don't really have fur, they have hair and it's thin, you may notice it more in a dog like that. Um, reproductive issues, that's not really something that stands out so much because they're seniors and hopefully they've been spayed or neutered and, you know, you're not really trying to repro- um, have a senior German shepherd reproduce anyway. But that is one of the symptoms. Lack of coordination. So they may look like they're a little drunk. And again, you may you may confuse that as something else like vestibular syndrome or something along those lines, but their their balance is off. Um, when they have blood work done, their cholesterol levels are typically high, uh, and their heart rate is is slower. Um, and then they are susceptible to uh, infections of the skin, toenails, and uh, even the ears. So that's a big one right there because it seems like ear infections in German shepherds is like a it's just such a common thing. I mean, I hear about it all the time and I really think it's the food, (laughs) but you know, it could be, it could be hypothyroidism as well. Now, if, if hypothyroidism is left untreated, it could actually lead to seizures and, and heart problems, which is scary. And I've actually witnessed it firsthand um, not too long ago with a, a visit to um, the home of someone who has a dog that had undiagnosed um, hypothyroidism. And I actually witnessed him have a seizure and he had had several and I insisted that they take the dog to the vet to get him checked out. Uh, they had taken him to the vet before because he was missing hair and his hair was thinning. And the vet that they had at the time had diagnosed him with alopecia and didn't even bother, you know, checking the thyroid, which I just can't imagine, but it does happen. Um, So anyway, they finally did find out that this poor dog had undiagnosed thyroid issue, which had been going on for for quite some period of time, long enough that it caused seizures and heart issues. Um, Fortunately, he is on heart, uh, I'm sorry, thyroid medication now, and he's improving. So that is good to know. But it, it can lead to some serious consequences. So it's really, really important to to get it diagnosed and treated. And I just mentioned earlier how how it's di- how it's diagnosed. It's it's really it's really not um 
it's really not as hard to figure out hypothyroidism as it may be some of the other diseases be- that we've talked about during this season, because some of the others, it's a process of elimination and there is no definitive test to figure out whether they have a certain disease. But that's not the case for hypothyroidism. That is, it's, you know, I don't want to say it's cut and dry, but it's a, it's a whole lot easier to figure out um, than some of the other issues that we discussed. Um, Canine cognitive disease would be an example of that. So let's talk about treatment for hypothyroidism in senior German shepherds. It's, I mean, it's, it's really straightforward and inexpensive, about $39 a month. Um, I know because we buy it <laughs> for Savvy and we've bought it for other seniors that we've had here at the sanctuary. But treatment is pretty much the same as an, a, as a human. It's treated with levothyroxine or L-thyroxine. Um, so it's a, th- it's a synthetic hormone, uh, thyroid hormone. And uh, then it, it balances their levels out and then, you know, they start to feel better. It's uh, it's a really tiny little pill. I mean, it's something you can slip in their food real easy and they wouldn't even know. And um, it's given twice a day. Typically, we feed the seniors here at the sanctuary twice a day. We feed them in the morning and then in the evening in, as opposed to one big meal a day, which, you know, doesn't really work well for us. Um, so, yeah, for Savvy, it literally... I literally slip it in her food twice a day and she doesn't even know it. And for other seniors we've had before, that's that's exactly how we give it. If we have a picky eater, then we just put it on a little treat. They get a little treat twice a day with a little bit of peanut butter or yogurt or pumpkin or something like that, something that's a little bit mushy that they can't pick the pill out of. And and in their belly it goes and they don't even know it. <laughs> so it's it's rather straightforward inexpensive and easy to treat if it's hypothyroidism. Uh, there are uh, there are other thyroid issues uh, besides hyperthyroidism. I mean, if you're a senior German shepherd, it, let's say your your veterinarian finds a mass on their on their um on their thyroid gland, uh, then that needs to be evaluated and perhaps biopsied and removed and after that if it if it turns out to be cancerous, it may need uh, chemotherapy, it may need radiation treatment or even iodine treatment. So um, there are there are other issues, other thyroid issues, but hypothyroidism is is the big one. That's the one that we've we've seen. So the prognosis for a senior German shepherd with hypothyroidism, it's it's pretty good. It's pretty good, I'm happy to say, <laughs> because there's been some that the prognosis has not been great, and I just felt bleak delivering that information. But yay, prognosis for hypothyroidism. Uh, it's, it's a common endocrine disease, and um, with early diagnosis and treatment, the, the prognosis is it's generally reasonable. I mean, Savvy's done great, so they can go on to enjoy a long survival time with an active quality of life, but the key is to get treatment and um, and continue treatment. Hey there, folks. This week's episode is being sponsored by The Shepherd Shop. The Shepherd Shop sells German Shepherd and dog-related merchandise, as well as our one-of-a-kind Woody's Place merchandise with proceeds supporting Woody's Place Senior German Shepherd Sanctuary. So to check out the Shepherd Shop and support the sanctuary, head on over to www.wpsgss.org backslash shepherd shop. That's S-H-E-P-H-E-R-D-S-H-O-P-P-E. And now back to our episode. So I just I want to share some experiences that we we have had here at the at the sanctuary with senior German shepherds with um, thyroid disease. Now, not too long ago, we had Atticus to the vet, and uh, they ran a, a general um, thyroid uh, blood test right there in the office, but then they drew additional blood for an extensive thyroid test, and they sent it to up to uh, Cornell. University in uh, upstate New York. 
because he 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 has quite a few symptoms of hypothyroidism, including missing patches. He's like practically bald on his his back legs and the skin is black and he has flaky skin and he gets ear infections and, uh, you know, all that good stuff. He's not as active as he used to be, but he he does not have thyroid issues, hy- hypothyroidism. But to look at him, you would have thought you would have thought that he did. So his issues, he has a lot, a lot of allergies. And we had we had testing done when he first came here um, back in 2018, December 2018. So those symptoms that I just described um, can also be indicative of serious allergies too. Uh, Champ had it as well. So, um, you know, it can be it can be a little tricky uh, as far as just looking at a dog and being able to figure out if that's what it is. So, but, but the, the bottom line is instead of, instead of guessing ourselves, we, we did the, the responsible thing and, and made sure that not only did they do the general thyroid blood work in the office, but that we sent blood out to Cornell to get, you know, extensive thyroid, uh, levels checked and all that stuff. So, um, <clears throat> so that's, that's Atticus's story. Now, we also have Savvy, who came in last summer. I can't remember if it was, I think it was August, either the end of July or or August. I believe it was August 2021. And um, she didn't have any hair on her belly, none. And her hair, the rest of her hair on her body was, it was short. It was just short. And I remember thinking like, this is weird. Her hair is like, it's not typical of a a German Shepherd at all. typically have lush full coats, you know, that mane, that nice mane around their their face, their necks and all that stuff. She didn't have that. It was just short. It was just short little hairs. <laughs> and um no hair. No hair on her belly and her belly and her groin were uh black. The skin was black. So um she started taking thyroid medicine pretty much as soon as she got here. And um within a few months I want to say like four or five, she had hair on her belly again, her coat started to look lush and gorgeous. And now here we are in uh, April, 2022, and she's, she's gorgeous. She has, I mean, she's got probably the most beautiful coat here at the sanctuary. It's full, it's lush, it's soft, soft, beautiful fur. And, um, Yeah, the thyroid medicine really worked wonders for Savvy, and I'm so grateful. And again, just a pill twice a day that costs $40 a month. That's it. Prior to Savvy, we had Misty, and uh, she she was with us. She was one of our super seniors. She came in at 14 and lived to be 17. She was an owner surrender. Her owner went into a nursing home and Misty was a little, she was little. And same with her. Her coat was rough. Um, didn't really feel great. It was like, you know, just brittle and rough to touch. And she she didn't have any bald spots, but her coat just didn't feel great. And let's face it, she wasn't lighting the world on fire. She didn't have a ton of energy. Her appetite really wasn't the best, but Again, she was 14 years old. So at first we were thinking, well, maybe that's what it was. And whenever we have a new resident come in, we always take them to the vet within the first couple of weeks of them getting here uh, for a full senior workup. That's everything. That's full physical examination. That's full blood panel, CBC, all that, all the, or chem panel, all that stuff unless there's something wrong and they need to go right away. So we didn't pick up on Misty's thyroid issue right away because it didn't get tested for whatever the reason. But uh, it became apparent that something wasn't quite right. And then um, and then we tested for the thyroid and sure enough, she had hypothyroidism. So once she got on her medication, she started to lighten up a little bit, liven up. She would have fun when she would go outside. In fact, she was feisty. Oh, my goodness. She was a feisty little girl. And she was even a little snarky. <laughs> and it was it was funny because it was hard to it was hard to discipline her because she was she was this little old granny dog and 
you know, it was just hard to correct this little old granny dog. But she went on to live to uh, be 17. And at the end, it was actually kidney failure that that took her life. And it was unfortunate toward the end of her life. Um, it wasn't a thyroid thing. It was just her and her kidneys and not feeling good. She she didn't want to eat anything, anything. And she would she pretty much resided under one of the beds here at the sanctuary in her last few days of life. And we were just slipping turkey under there for her. And Mr. Woody's place loves little tasty cake donut holes. And he would put them under the bed for her. And of course, she loved him. She just loved Mr. Woody's place and she would do anything for him. So she would eat turkey and donut holes with Mr. Woody's place her last few days of life. Um, But yeah, that was Misty. So that's that was our experience with um with hypothyroidism and um if you suspect that your senior german shepherd might have any of the symptoms that i've mentioned you know it would definitely pay to go get that blood work done say you want to get your senior german shepherd's thyroid checked out and get treatment for it because really it does it does improve their life just like it does people if if you you have thyroid issues or if you know anyone who has thyroid issues um it definitely once you once you start getting treatment, you do see improvement. Now, I mean, for people I'm going down a little rabbit trail here because you know I I have Hashimoto syndrome. Who doesn't? Um, but it can be it can be a little difficult um, um, getting the dosage right, and then it it can fluctuate. You know, with the inflammation of the autoimmune disease caused that causes the Hashimoto syndrome. But for dogs, it's a little bit, it's a little more straightforward than it is for people. So definitely worth it. Think your dog has um, a hypothyroidism, get them to the vet, get them checked out, get them that medication and help them live the best life they can possibly live while they are here with us. All right. That, I'm done. I'm done. La, 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 la. I'm done. I'm done. Season three. <laughs> I'm going to have myself a little party. <laughs> it's been long, folks. It's been four months that uh, we've been in the throes of the 20 most common health issues in Senior German Shepherd. So, but hey, I, I appreciate you being here. I really do. I hope you found this information to be helpful. Uh, remember, I'm not a veterinarian. Okay. I, I, I'm not claiming to have any medical expertise. Um, this is just what we know. This is this this has been our experiences and what we've learned about the different diseases uh, throughout season three. But if you have any medical concerns, please don't email me about them. I I get I get emails quite often about my dogs doing this. My dogs know that I'm not a vet, folks. Okay, I'm not, and I don't want to steer you in the wrong direction. I want what's best for your dog, and for you. And what would be best is if you have any medical concerns, call your vet and talk with your vet. If you're not happy with your vet, call another vet. And until you get, until you feel satisfied with with an answer, okay. Um, but I don't want to steer anyone in the wrong direction. But this, you know, so any any straight up medical medical a, a, a knowledge that you need, medical a, advice uh, answers, call your vet. But on that note. All right, so whoever has stuck with us through season three and has subscribed to our Life with Old Dogs newsletter, okay, it's, I, don't, I, don't, I don't send a whole bunch of spam to your inbox, really. It's just once a week. It's a newsletter once a week, maybe occasionally if we're having like some big sale in the shepherd shop or whatever, which is our store, by the way. That's another thing I'm hearing. Well, how much do you get from the sales of the Shepherd Shop? We get all of it because it's our store and it supports the sanctuary. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, you don't get spammed with a whole bunch of stuff. But um, if you are a subscriber, okay, you, you have till the end of the day today, really, to subscribe. You are going to get, in the next few days, you're going to get a free ebook in PDF form that covers the 20 most common health issues in senior German shepherds. Everything we covered in season three, you're going to get in print format that you can either keep as a PDF file on your on your computer, your laptop, your smartphone or whatever, or you can print it out. And I have no problem with you sharing it with other people as long as you give us credit for it. Okay, I, I'm not... You know, we we uh, life it is copyrighted, so can't have you know, 
anybody printing it and claiming it as their own. But you want to share it? I don't have a problem with that. Go ahead and share it, but just make sure you give us credit for it. Um, again, you want that? You want that free PDF ebook? All right, the 20 most common health issues in senior German Shepherds, go to our website, wpsgss.org. Scroll about halfway down and look for the join our mailing list postcard and sign up. You have to the end of the day today. All right, and the date today is Friday, April 8th, 2022. Okay, so if you get if you get signed up before midnight tonight, you're going to get that. If you don't sign up, you're out of luck. <laughs> All right, folks, we will be back in about four to six weeks. And until then, be well. Mm-hmm.